So we'll briefly review how the token mechanisms work for budget campaigns. Uh, these are going to be the main mechanisms for all the smart links and all the future campaigns, uh, like the API conversions. So there are numbers here. Basically, a contractor comes and creates now a campaign contract on our layer two, so that's free. Then they can add a budget in any number of stable coins uh, that go into a singleton contract on the main chain. This singleton contract directly uses those stable coins to purchase Tuki from our internal exchange. So this is the first important step, which creates automatic demand. Um, once the uh, automatic demand occurs and Tuki is filled in the campaign, there's a validation step. And then we start basically referring. Uh, the conversions differ between campaign types. For example, in PPC smart links, it's clicks. So basically these are referrers. Um, the contractor, the business or brands start by uh, publishing it to their followers, their fans, their supporters, their clients, customers, their current uh, user base what's called the sourcing seed, and then by referral chains, they reach converters. Each time there is a conversion event, it happens again. This entire thing, this entire process happens on our proprietary protocol. This is basically happens completely on a multi-party state chain um, mechanism across browsers. So it's completely off-chain, completely decentralized, completely secure, and uh, introduced in our last patents also private. Um, then once there's a conversion again registered on our layer two, so no cost there, what happens then is basically the contract attributes the two key rewards um, to the various referral chains. Now, this is a nice step because this auto distribution means that the network and the economy becomes more distributed with time, right? Because there was this one contractor who purchased those two keys. They were all his. And then these two keys started to get distributed to more and more people. And what happens is the more people hold Tuki, the more strong the economy becomes. Uh, in parallel, a network fee that's currently network-wide and set at 10% is taken. So from the referral uh, uh, fee that the contractor is willing to pay, 90% goes to humans, 10% goes um, to the network, and currently 25% of that 10% goes to a deep freeze. So it's almost like a burn. It goes out of circulation to another contract called the deep freeze uh, contract. It's frozen for 10 years. And after 10 years, it's used to fill up the participation mining pool, which basically then dissipates again over a decade. So it's immediately taken out of the market. And then across 10, after 10 years, starts slowly dissipating back into the market again to users, to referrers, to converters, to contractors with our reputation mining program. Uh, out of the other 75% uh, taken, uh, so from this 10%, 25% goes to deep freeze. From the rest of it, 50% uh, is, is burned. These are varying percentages. So we may choose to burn different amounts a long time. We don't commit to in advance. Some of it will natively be used to keep the project going. Some other percent will be burned. So that, and also we're talking about human uh, future plans to basically use Tuki as a sort of governance token. So those 10% will, uh, uh, even that 50% will somehow go uh, back to the community. Uh, but basically all of it is used to strengthen the economy of the Tuki network wide. Um, now, so, so that's auto distribution, that's auto burn, that's auto freeze. And another thing is that when that stable coin that, that the contractor used goes into the internal exchange, it's still in our uh, Tuki network contract system. There is an automatic mechanism that then just relays this organic demand to the markets. So it goes to Uniswap and every organic demand that's generated in the app is reflected to the markets. And we purchase more Tuki in, from the market to refill the balance of Tuki here. So the base idea here is that all of this auto demand, uh, automatic demand relay automatic distribution, automatic burn, all these things go to strengthen the network. And the more the network is used, the more these will take effect over the speculations happening in the exchanges. The last part is basically the withdrawal of those earnings. So there's an automatic hodl. When you earn your referral rewards, they're not in your wallet yet. They're held in escrow for you by the, by the contract system. 
So that's an automatic huddle against strengthening the economy. Once a user wants to withdraw, they make a withdrawal request for all their pending rewards from all their pending campaigns in which they have earnings. They receive a withdrawal signature, which they can then submit <coughs> sorry, to the main chain and receive their two key earnings. In that process, a fee of 50 cents, $0.5, is taken in Tuki from what they've earned. So basically, they're paying a fee which is less than sending ETH, mostly. Um, and basically, we do this process for, for the users. So you just you will see this very, very soon live in production as well. Um, you hit a claim button. It does everything else for you. You don't have to pay ETH or anything. It's just that that small fee is deducted out of what we take. So we can actually finance these uh, mass operations for everyone. Uh, so that's basically how the network uh, uh, tokenomics work for budget campaigns. Uh, for API conversions and Web2 conversions, it will be a bit different when, uh, they, when these users can start earning in the native token of the app. It will still be a very strong tokenomics for Tuki, but there will be swap mechanisms in the end to make sure that these are rewarded in the uh, correct uh, tokens while still maintaining the strength of Tuki token. Uh, and we'll update on that accordingly once it's ready.